Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian and today we're going to be talking about some players that you can pick up for the final week of the NHL fantasy season, week 16. This is your fantasy hockey finals, guys, so congratulations if you made it through and to this week, you're at least second place in your league. I'm going to try to suggest some guys that you can pick up for this week to help you win your championship, guys. If you win this week, you take it all home. So all you got to do is make the right pickups and hopefully you'll take home that championship. Before we get started, guys, please leave that like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Tip. I would really appreciate all of your support. Without further ado, let's jump into a little bit of a preview of the schedule for this week. Now, there are three teams with absolute trash schedules, and those teams are Calgary, Detroit, and Florida. If you own any players from those teams, you can drop them. I would wait till after the Monday games to drop your Florida players since they play on Monday, but after that, you can pretty much drop everyone from those teams. I also don't love Nashville and Winnipeg schedules because they play three games, but those three games are on the three busiest nights of the week, so you may not even be able to fit your Winnipeg Jets. Obviously, though, that being said, you're still going to keep your big Jets players like Shifley, Wheeler, Hellbuck on your team. Now, this week, there are two incredibly busy nights, and those nights are Monday and Saturday. There's 28 out of 31 teams playing those days, so odds are your lineup is full on Monday and Saturday. Wednesday is also a pretty busy night, so when I'm suggesting players to pick up I'm telling you guys some players that are mostly play on Tuesday, Thursday, a little bit of Wednesday and Friday games to help you guys maximize the amount of games in your lineup. The last thing to note for this week, guys, is that Sunday games don't actually count this week, at least in Yahoo pools. I don't know exactly why that is, but the week ends on Saturday. So if you're banking on someone to play for you on Sunday, it's not going to happen. So don't do that. All right. Now, so jumping into some forward options that you can add to your team to help you out this week. First on the list, guys, is Nick Suzuki, Montreal Canadiens, 49% owned, and he's back, baby. Over his last four games, he's got six points, and he's looking really, really great. He's playing on line with Montreal's best player this year, Tyler Toffoli, so I don't expect him to slow down. He makes her an excellent streamer for the finals for the Wednesday and Thursday games. Jack Hughes, New Jersey Devils, 43% owned, and New Jersey plays on Tuesday and Thursday. Jack Hughes has been playing actually very, very well. He's getting top line time, top power play time. He makes for a pretty good ad this week. Next are David Krejci and Craig Smith, Boston Ruins, 42% owned. They play Tuesday and Thursday for Boston, which is great because, like I said, they're off nights and you're probably going to be able to fit them in your lineup. They're both playing very, very well. They're on Boston's second line with Taylor Hall, and they're both getting a little bit of power play two time as well. They make for very, very good additions to stream for those two off nights. Next is Chandler Stevenson, Vegas Golden Knights, 37% owned. He plays on Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday's a little bit busier, so do make sure that you can fit him in your lineup on Wednesday before you go and pick him up. But if you can, he makes for an excellent addition. He's playing with Pacioretty and Mark Stone on both the top power play and 5-on-5. Five five. Next is Victor Olofsson, Buffalo Sabres, 35% owned. He plays Tuesday and Thursday. Buffalo's actually not doing too bad these days. They're not looking as bad as they were a month or so ago. And he's playing with Reinhardt on that top line. He's also getting top power play time. I really don't hate Victor Olofsson, especially for those two off nights this week. Next is Jordan Eberle. New York Islanders, 31% owned. And while he hasn't been that amazing lately, he's playing on the top line with Matthew Barzal and is still getting a lot of power play time. Now, I like him just for those off nights Tuesday and Thursday. They play New Jersey and Buffalo on those two off nights. Neither team is that hard to score against. Next is Alexi Lafreniere, New York Rangers, 29% owned. They play Wednesday and Thursday, which is pretty nice, and he's finally started to catch fire a little bit. He's playing on the top line with Zibanejad and Buchnevich, so it does, really doesn't hurt that deployment at all. If you absolutely need someone to stream for Wednesday and Thursday back-to-back -back games, I really don't mind Lafreniere at all. Next is Mr. Pool Party, Jesse Pugliarvi, Edmonton Oilers, 22% owned. He's a Tuesday, Thursday streamer for those two off nights. Don't mind it at all. He's playing top line with Connor McDavid. He's not getting that top power play time with McDavid, but you don't really need it when you're playing with Connor McDavid. You're still going to put up some points. Next is Kasperi Kapanen and Pittsburgh Penguins, 22% owned. Tuesday, Thursday streamer once again. And he's currently playing second line with Carter and McCann. And I see him staying there even when Malkin comes back this week. So he should be on the second line with McCann and Malkin. Jeff Carter will probably slide down to the third line. So I don't mind Kapanen at all. He's a guy that doesn't need power play time to produce. He's at a rush producer. So I don't mind picking him up one bit for those two games. 
And there are quite a few Tuesday and Thursday streamers on this list. That's because there are a decent amount of teams playing both those days, despite them both being off nights. And if you need to make one, two, or even three pickups for those two nights, I don't mind it at all. Casey Middlestat is a good option. He's playing second line on Buffalo. He's also getting top power play time, and he has been producing. Don't mind it one bit. Next is Marcus Foligno, Minnesota Wild, 15% owned, and this dude's actually been on fire lately. He's playing on a line with Joel Erickson Eck, and he's looking quite good. He's not my favorite option in the entire world, but if you're in a really deep league and he's available, don't mind it at all. He's putting up points. He hits a decent amount too, puts up some okay peripherals. Next is Cole Caulfield, Munchau Canadians, 13% owned, and last game he played on a line with Suzuki and Tyler Toffoli. This kid is really, really promising. He hasn't really done anything yet, but he has been shooting, so at the very least, he'll get you a few shots. At best, he'll score a goal or two. If you're desperate in a deep league and he's still available, well, he's a great streamer for Wednesday and Thursday. Next is Jesper Brack, New Jersey Devils, 12% owned, still seeing a lot of power play time, still seeing top two line time, and he's still producing pretty decently. If you're in a deep league once again and you need a Tuesday and Thursday streamer, and none of the guys that I mentioned earlier are available, Jesper Bratt's actually a very, very good option. Next is Yegor Sharangovich, New Jersey Devils, 8% owned. He's another Tuesday, Thursday streamer. He's playing top line with Jack Hughes, and he's getting a good amount of power play time. Yeah, it's a second power play, but that second power play has really caught fire ever since Butcher joined it. So I don't mind streaming Sharangovich at all, especially for those two off nights. He should put up a point or two for you. Next is Alex Barboulet, Tampa Bay Lightning, 5% owned. He's a Wednesday and Friday streamer, but if you're watching this before your semifinal week ends, well, Barboulet is actually a very good streamer for Sunday game if you need someone to just guarantee you that win. Barboulet is playing top line with Braden Point. He's also seeing top power play time. He's, he's a very, very good ad right now. Last but not least is Brandon Hagel, Chicago Blackhawks, 0% only. He's another Tuesday, Thursday streamer, and he's been really, really hot. He's got six points in his last five games, playing second line with Kirby Dock and Vinny Hinostorza, and he's also getting second power play time. He's obviously not the best pickup in the world, but in deep, deep leagues, this guy's available. He's 0% owned. He's available in almost 100% of leagues. If you're desperate and you're in one of those deep, deep leagues, Hagel makes for an excellent pickup for Tuesday and Thursday games. Jumping into some defensemen now, first on the list is Brian Ellis and Matthias Ekholm, Nashville Predators, 45% and 33% owned, and they're both producing, they're both getting some power play time, and they're both excellent defensemen overall. I don't mind them at all, especially for Monday and Wednesday games. They play Columbus twice. These guys should put up some points. Next is Jared Spurgeon, Minnesota Wild, 38% owned, and he's still getting top power play time in Minnesota. Minnesota hasn't been all that hot lately, but he's definitely got the opportunity to succeed. I don't mind him at all. Next is Matt Grizzlick and Mike Riley, Boston Bruins, 35% and 28% owned. Matt Grizzlick is still manning that top Boston Bruins power play. That features Marshawn, Bergeron, Pasternak. Yeah, this guy is someone that should be owned in way more than 35% of leagues. He's a guy that can definitely put up some points next week, especially with their first two games coming against New Jersey. Mike Riley is another really good ad for Boston. Just make sure that he's actually healthy before you add him. As of this recording, he's day-to-day -day with a minor, minor injury. If he's healthy, he also makes for a decent ad. He's obviously not as great as Grizzly, but he's still getting second power play time, and the dude's putting him up some points still. Next, Alex Goligoski, Arizona Coyotes, 35% owned. He's still seeing top power play time in Arizona, and he's still producing. I don't understand why. He's only 35% owned. Next is Tyler Myers, Vancouver Canucks, 33% owned. And he's a good guy to have for all around production. He'll get some blocks, he'll get some shots, he'll get some hits, and he'll put up some points every once in a while, especially because he's getting some second power play time. I do not mind Tyler Myers as an ad for this week, especially since Vancouver's got four games all against the Edmonton Oilers, and they're not the greatest team defensively. Next is Ryan Graves, Colorado Avalanche, 31% owned, and he's still skating alongside Kale McCart, five on five, which makes his plus minus get pretty good. He also blocks a good amount of shots. He shoots. Don't expect crazy offensive numbers from him, but if peripherals are what you need, he's a guy that can get you some pretty decent ones. Next are Nate Schmidt and Travis Hamnick, Vancouver Canucks, 20% and 11% owned. Hamnick is great for peripherals like blocks, even some hits, shoots an okay amount. Schmidt too is okay for peripherals, but not quite as great as Hamnick, but he can put up a point every once in a while because he gets second power play time in Vancouver. Next is Duncan Keith, Chicago Blackhawks, 19% owned. And by no means do I love adding Duncan Keith right now, but Boquist has just been confirmed out for the rest of the season. So Duncan Keith should be getting top power play time. 
which if you're in a deep league and you need someone to put up points, he should be able to put up a few. Next is Yanni Hackenpah. Carolina Hurricanes, 16% own, and he's strictly a bangers league option because this dude hits like crazy. He's averaging like four hits a game, which is pretty good. If you need someone to get you some hits, Hockenpah is your guy. My next two guys, Drysdale and Dobson, are kind of a stretch, but if you're insanely desperate and you need someone that can put up points, Dobson and Drysdale are both getting a good amount of power play time on their teams. Last but not least is Will Butcher, New Jersey Devils, 1% owned, and Ty Smith has now returned, so he's not top power play anymore, but that hasn't stopped him from getting points. Last game, on hit the second power play, he managed two power play points. That second power play in New Jersey is actually looking pretty good with Sharangovich on him as well. Butcher now actually has six points in his last six games. Now jumping into some goalies, some of these goalies I'm not actually that crazy about, but at least they'll get you the start. So some of them are desperation ads only if you're desperate to get goalie starts. They're not necessarily guys that I would recommend, and I'll tell you that as I go through them. First on the list is Ilya Soroka in New York Islanders, 49% owned, and he should get two starts for the Islanders next week. And the Islanders are very stingy defensively, so he should do pretty good in his two starts next week. I don't mind Sorokin at all for next week. Next is Jake Allen, Montreal Canadiens, 43% owned, and he should get three out of Montreal's four starts next week. Price, I don't think, will be back, so Jake Allen is a good guy to be streaming right now. Next is Elvis Merzlikens, Columbus Blue Jackets, 41% owned, and he could get four out of four Columbus starts this week, because I know they don't like to play their tertiary goalie very often. So Merzlikens could realistically see both games against Nashville and both games against Detroit. I like that a lot. Next is Mackenzie Blackwood, New Jersey Devils, 40% owned, and he's a desperation option. He's one of those that if you absolutely need a goalie to stream, you can grab him. Otherwise, I have to look for other options. New Jersey plays two games against Boston and then two against the Islanders. The Islanders don't score that much, but the odds of Blackwood winning those games is pretty low. Next is Jake Ottinger, Dallas Stars, 39% owned, and Dallas seems to be alternating their games 1-1-1-1, one, 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 one. so if that holds true, Ottinger should get the Monday game against Florida and the Friday game against Tampa Bay. Do I like that a lot? No, I don't. Pretty tough matchups. If you can avoid it, do so. If there's nobody else available, you could try to ride it out. Next is Jeremy Schwayman, Boston Bruins, 33% owned, and poor Halak. Schwayman seems to be the backup in Boston. And in Boston, the backup basically means that you're starting half the game. So Swayman could realistically see two starts next week. I'm not sure that he will, but he'll at least see one half of the back-to-back -back against New Jersey on Monday or Tuesday. If you need a goalie for that back-to-back -back set, Swayman's a very, very good option. Next is Brian Elliott, Philadelphia Flyers, 32% owned. Do I love Brian Elliott? Hell no. But if you're desperate, he'll get two starts this week, one against Pittsburgh and one against Washington. Next is Cal Peterson, Los Angeles Kings, 27% owned, and he could see two or three starts this week. It depends how LA decides to distribute their goalie games. Now, this is one of those desperation ads that I'm not crazy about. He's good for Monday and Wednesday. He should get one of the two games against Arizona. After that, they play Colorado Friday and Saturday. I'm not crazy about that at all. Use him at your own risk. Next is Uko Pekalukinen, Buffalo Sabres, 5% owned, and he seems to be the starter in Buffalo now. Poor Tukarski, he's not really getting starts anymore. Pekka Lukanen will be seeing pretty much every start from here on out except for the back-to-backs, which means he'll get three starts next week. He probably won't win any of his starts, but he gets pelted with shots, so he should still put up a decent amount of points in leagues where saves count as points. Next is Joseph Kornosh, San Jose Sharks, 5% own, and do I love him? Absolutely not. San Jose goalies are always scary. He seems to be the starter now, though, in San Jose. He's getting the majority of the games. I guess they just want to give the game to someone younger, someone who has some promise, unlike Martin Jones, who just is not a good goalie at all. If you're really, really, really desperate and there's nobody else available, Coronash should get three out of four San Jose starts next week. Next is Marcus Hoberg, Ottawa Senators, 3% owned. He should get all three of Ottawa starts next week. Do I love it? Absolutely not. He's another desperation option, but he should get Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday start. If for some reason you need starts on those days or the busiest nights of the week. But if you do, Hober is an option. Last but not least is Alex Lyon, Philadelphia Flyers, 2% own, and Philadelphia has two sets of back-to-backs next week. So Elliott will get two games in line, will also get two games in all likelihood because Carter Hart is out for the rest of the season. Lyon should get the games Monday and Friday, whereas Elliott should get Tuesday and Saturday. Wishing you guys all the best luck in winning your matchup this week. Take home that championship. All right, guys, you've reached the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like, 
subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment, ask me a fantasy hockey related question. I'll be happy to answer you. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.